Welcome to Storytime with Chris James. I will pick up right where I left off last time. Pam and Black Jacket Pam were waiting for Sarah. After a few minutes, she came rushing over to them. I found this for you. It's just like the one I got Pam for Christmas, only in brown. She handed Pam a jacket. Pam looked at the jacket. It was cool looking, and the air was getting colder, but I can't take this. Uh, how did you... You didn't just take it, did you? I am not a thief. I opened the cash drawer, and I left some money. They didn't have change, so I just left a handful. Pam remembered how Sarah always had a wad of bills on her, usually hundreds. Then I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. She pulled the jacket on and looked at her reflection in the glass of the store. The trio headed out to see if Sarah could deliver. How will we know which direction to go? Sarah asked. I figure we can just look for all the destruction and follow it backwards, Pam said. As they walked, they could see broken windows all along their path. As they passed the side corridor, it looked as if the destruction had missed all the storefronts. Looks like you're right. I just hope we don't run into any... A huge black glob of something went flying by Pam's head. It hit the wall and stuck. Steam began to come from the wall as the paint was melting. Oh, shoot. Uh, let's go. Pam began running. She dodged a second sticky missile as it ran through the entrance to a sporting goods store. A black jacket Pam was pulling Sarah along with her. Black jacket looked as if running was as easy as walking to anyone else. Sarah looked as if running was something other people did. Uh, should we grab a few flashlights? Not steal them, but borrow them on the undetermined basis. Pam said all of this as she grabbed a couple flashlights along with batteries and shoved them into her pockets. I know this store from the mall. I'll nip in and pay as soon as I can, Sarah said as she grabbed a flashlight as well. Black globs went sailing overhead and crashed into a display on the far wall. The display began to smoke. Then a flame was visible. What are those things, Pam said to no one in particular. Red hot goobers, Sarah ventured. Oh, yuck, that's horrible, but funny, Black Jacket Pam said. They ducked down low and ran along the aisle, trying to find a second way out. As they went, more of the black sticky missiles flew through the air, causing fires to break out anywhere they hit. Soon, the store was filled with smoke as most of the displays caught fire. Pam got down on the floor. Down here, guys, the smoke isn't as thick. Black Jacket Pam and Sarah got down on the floor as well. Now the three crawled along looking for anything that looked like a back door. There, I see something like a back room. A uh, Pam had to reach up into the thick black smoke and try to find a doorknob. She ran her hand up along the frame. Nothing. She tried moving to the other side of the door. Once more, she felt all along the door for a knob. Once more, uh, there was nothing. Shoot, I can't find the knob. Pam thumped the door with her fist. It swung inwards. Oh. Pam pushed on the, floor, the door and it swung open. They crawled into the dark back room. Pam pushed the door shut and looked for something to hold it in place. Move those boxes over. Maybe they'll slow those things down. They slid a bunch of boxes over to the opening. One box fell forward and it pushed the door open in the opposite direction. Pam pushed on the door and then she pulled. The door swung in both directions. Let's just get out of here. 
Pam pulled the flashlight from her jacket pocket. She got the batteries out after too much time trying to open the blister pack. The light came on and illuminated the room. It was filled with all things outdoorsy. Camping gear, rappelling gear, hunting gear. There was a camouflaged recliner in case you wanted to relax while in the great outdoors. Pam spotted the back door. Now let's get going, as she opened the door. Slowly, she stuck her head out and looked both ways. The hallway looked the same in both directions. Which way should we go, Pam asked her companions. Sarah looked at Black Jacket Pam and asked, Which way do you think we should go? Black Jacket Pam looked right and then left and then right again. We should go right, Sarah announced. We go left. She looked at Pam, who was giving her an odd look. What? Oh, you see, Pam has just about always chosen the wrong direction. So any time we need to choose, we just go the opposite direction that th she thinks is right. Pam tried to think back of her own world. Did she ever do that? She had to ask her Sarah when she got back with her. The hallway was long. It looked like it was used to move merchandise in and out of the stores. The walls were scuffed and dented by items being pushed on carts. The lights were all out, so the flashlights had to be used. Let's only use one flashlight at a time. Save on batteries, Pam said. Black Jacket Pam surreptitiously pulled her notebook out and began to write. Use only one flashlight. She caught Pam looking at her. What? I have to write things down or I forget them. And what you just said is something I want to remember. Sarah got up close to Pam's ear. Uh, she's the best, but her memory is a bit frayed. They followed the hallway for what felt like hours. Every so often they would come to an intersection with another hallway. They kept going straight ahead. As they passed each door, they would try to the knob to see if the door would open. They were all locked. We should have grabbed a crowbar from the storeroom, Pam said. She watched as Black, pa Black Jacket Pam wrote this down as well. I need a break, Pam announced. As soon as she said it, Sarah slumped to the floor. As Sarah looked done in. I need a bath, a meal, and some sleep, but not in that order. Black Jacket Pam looked at the two as if they were slackers. I'll see if I can find a door into some place other than this hallway. She started walking away. Pam knew she didn't fall asleep. But she did wake up to the sound of someone running. She opened one eye to see Black Jacket Pam running down the hall towards her. I found a door. It was unlocked. The store sells... It, it sells... She pulled out her notebook and took a quick look. It sells tools. And she gave a smile of triumph. The two Pams got Sarah onto her feet. Sarah did her best I-don't-want-to-go act. Uh, come on, it's only a little farther. We're almost there. Almost there turned out to be about 30 minutes. The tool store was just that. It was filled with nothing but tools. Being the only unlocked door they found, it would have to do. Ham tried to think. Did I pass a tool store when I first got here? She looked at the front entrance. I'm going to have a quick look. She looked at Sarah, who was out like a light. You two stay here. She quietly slipped over to the entrance. Just outside was a kiosk with cell phone accessories. Ooh, sparkly. She felt drawn to the display, but caught herself. Act your wage. 
she said under her breath. To the left was a dress shop filled with floor-length gowns. Pam looked at them. Brides of Frankenheimer? Who picks these names? Pam looked to the right. There was a huge store filled with just about any kind of expensive retro garment known to man. Dimensions, styles from beyond. Somehow they'd found their way to the beginning. Chapter 5 Home Pam went back to get her friends. A black jacket Pam was pacing about like a caged tiger. A Sarah was asleep behind the counter. We're there. The store is right outside. Dimensions, styles from beyond. It's right there. Pam felt like jumping up and down, so she did. Black Jacket Pam looked at Sarah. Give me a hand. She bent down and grabbed some legs. Pam got her arms around Sarah's chest and lifted. Between them, they began carrying Sarah out the door and along the corridor. The store was dark. It felt cold since the heater was off and it was December. Pam was glad she'd gotten this new jacket. Then she felt sad knowing that Wendy had been eaten by the tongue monster along with her other jacket. This made Pam think about her driver's license. It should be in her, pout, her purse, which was on a chair back in the library at the office, hopefully. This got her to thinking about her own world. Do you own a pickup or a car? she asked Black Jacket Pam. I have a brand new Chevy Silverado with all the trimmings, she said. Heated seats and all. Oh, where, where did you get it? Dad bought it for me for Christmas. It's bright orange with black trim. Wow, that sounds great. Pam thought back to her Christmas vehicle, which was a 1980 Chevy Malibu with mismatching doors, orange shag carpet throughout. Yeah, Dad got it that weird color so I could find it. I have a photo in my wallet so I know what to look for. Black Jacket Pam looked a bit concerned. I guess I keep losing things. Sarah stays around to help me remember. They made their way to the back of the store by the fitting rooms. Pam looked at all the doors and wondered just how safe this experiment was going to be. I was in number four, or five, or maybe it was three. Uh, then I wound up here. She looked at Black Jacket Pam for assurance. Uh, I think that's right. She looked down at Sarah. Hey, kiddo, which fitting room did we use again? Without opening her eyes, Sarah said, We went into number three, you went into number three, and I went into number four. Then you slipped into number four with me. Sarah rolled onto her side as if to dismiss her antagonators. Uh, Pam looked at Black Jacket, Pam. I guess I could should go see what happens. This reminds me of the Bigfoot adventure. Yeah, that was weird. I couldn't figure out which tree to run around. Uh, did you save Hortense's life? Three times. She's still trying to pay me back. They stood there trying to decide how to proceed. I guess I'll go now, Pam stood there. Hey, it was great meeting you. You're who I wish I was sometimes. Black Jacket Pam looked like she was going to say more, but she didn't. Pam felt as if she were getting something as well, walking over to the fitting room, number four, and stepped in. The room was unremarkable. The stool was built to last. It had an old pair of men's pants draped over it. She turned around a few times. This didn't elicit any kind of a response. Maybe I need to touch something. 
Pam touched the walls, the mirror, the stool, though she tried to avoid getting too close to the pants. Nothing was getting her anywhere. Pam thought about what had happened just before she vanished. The floor! Pam looked at the floor. It had some kind of a weird-looking carpet that had seen better days. The pattern looked like some kind of an optical illusion, with lines running in all directions. Pam put her hand on the floor, and the lights went out. Pam came to, laying on the floor of the fitting room. Her legs were up in the air, pushed up against the wall, and she could see her boots. Uh, they were on the wrong feet. Oh, Lord, my head hurts. She realized uh, this had happened the last time she'd vanished. Sitting up, she got her boots straightened out and then opened the door, slowly. The fitting room was way in the back of the store. The lights were all out. Only a few security lights were on, illuminating a few places. I hope there aren't any security cameras in here. She looked around for anything camera-like looking things. Walking away from the fitting rooms, Pam began to wonder why all she saw were men's clothes. Suits and ties and things, mainly. Uh, must be the new department over. Uh, must be the next department over. Uh, Pam went looking for the exit. The gates were closed and locked. Pam tried looking for a switch to open them, but found a key slot where there should have been a switch. Well, this is getting me nowhere. Pam started walking around looking for another way out. She heard voices. Someone, or rather, some ones, were talking over near the shoe section. Pam carefully crept over to see who was talking. She prayed it wouldn't be her. A shelf was conveniently positioned so Pam could kneel behind it and peer up over the top. Three women, all dressed in cleaning staff uniforms, were busy trying on shoes. They were having a grand old time as each one modeled the shoes for the others to see. Pam was so relieved she didn't look anything like any of them. She crawled away on her hands and knees. Pam walked around in the dark, looking for a way out. This was when she spotted the mop bucket being used to prop open the back door. All right, I'm free. Oops. Somebody came walking in through the door. The woman was carrying a box filled with paper towels. As the woman walked by, Pam slipped out the door behind her. Now I'm free. Pam had to duck behind a dumpster as a security patrol drove by. The parking lot was mostly empty. There were the cleaning staff's van parked by the back door. There was one car without any tires. It was sitting on blocks. Uh, Pam looked for her pickup before remembering that she'd been on foot. Oh, man, I can walk back to the office, but it's twice as far as my home. Pam decided she'd go home and get a ride in the morning. It was warm as Pam walked along. More like a summer evening than a winter night. The jacket was way too warm, so Pam draped it over one shoulder. Her feet were getting a bit hot inside her boots. Strange weather. Pam decided not to worry about it any more. Her house was dark. All the lights were off. Pam couldn't believe her dad had taken down all the Christmas lights so soon. He usually left them up until January 6th, Three Kings Day. She patted all of her pockets twice looking for her keys. The keys were in her purse, back at the office, hopefully. Walking around to the side of the house, Pam saw there was a fence running around the yard. Man, Dad has been busy today. She looked with admiration and annoyance at the obstacle. 
there was a gate which was inconveniently locked. How and why did he put this thing up today? Pam looked for a way in. Stepping back, she took a small run and jumped. Her fingers got a hold of the top of the fence. Pushing with her feet, she managed to get her chest up level with the top of the boards. Using all the upper body strength she didn't have, Pam got her waist up level with the top. Her head and shoulders were up in the air, and uh, then they weren't. She'd pushed too hard and overcompensated. Her body began to lean forward until gravity took over. Pam flipped over the fence and landed on the grass below. Ouchie, 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 she sat up and rubbed her sore parts. Once her aches and pains were properly seen to, Pam walked to the backyard. It looked very good compared to this morning. The patio door was locked, but her dad kept a key under the mat by the grill. Pam grabbed the key and quietly unlocked the door. So far, so good. Pam slipped inside. The house was pitch black. Pam was halfway across the living room before thinking of using the improperly obtained flashlight. I'll definitely go to the mall tomorrow and make things right, Pam whispered to herself. Placing her hand over the lens, she could get just enough light to not step on anything noisy. She was shocked to see her mother had taken down the Christmas tree already. Man, these two are acting weird, she mumbled under her breath. Her folks' room was on the ground floor. Pam got to the foot of the stairs without alerting anyone to her presence. Stepping on the first tread, Pam put her weight down slowly. This will take forever, she mumbled. She moved her foot over the edge right next to the banister. Less likely to creak there, up she went. Her bed looked so inviting, she barely managed to pull her boots off before falling into the warm, soft blankets. The sunlight was coming through the bedroom window, bringing the new day into focus. It shone on the dresser, covered with all of the latest and greatest makeup available from the mall, from lip gloss, the exact shade of a sunbeam, to the light green eyeliner that had been so popular for four days. The sunlight crawled across the room, lighting up the desktop, covered with paperwork, already sweated over, retyped, retype typed again, and turned in, graded, returned. Formerly the most important thing in life, now just paper, waiting to be dealt with in its final hour. The sunlight wasn't about to stop there. It scrolled across the room, looking for the bed, which looked more like a mound of discarded clothing. How, having reached its destination, the light sought out the sole inhabitant ensconced somewhere in the depths of the cottony tomb. The mound moved, as if under some kind of semi-intelligent control. A sound escaped from the interior. From outside the domain of teenage Langor, a called as if from a less untidy dimension, came the sound of an adult voice. Pam, time to get up. You don't want to be late for your first day at work. There was no response from the huddled mass. The door to the teen territory swung open, giving the mother a clear shot at her slumbering offspring. Get up now. You've already missed breakfast. You'll have to grab something at work. Now let's go. Uncle Ray was nice enough to give you a job, so let's move it before you're eligible for Social Security. The bedclothes moved back. 
allowing a single extremity to venture forth, as if unsure of the safety of the surrounding arena. You have five minutes to get dressed and get going. The mother, better known as mom, or procreator, sometimes the creator, her friends called her Paula, walked over and peeled back a few layers of blankets and sheets till the blue jean clad form of her youngest and oldest, well, her only daughter, came into view. Better put on something besides what you're wearing, and why are you wearing your pants in bed? Oh, never mind. You can't show up dressed like that. Pam Pamela had gone to school on more than one occasion, dressed in her jammies and winter coat. The fuzzy house shoes barely survived the last trip. Unable to resist the call of the mother, Pam pulled herself across the mattress. When one leg was dangling from the edge, she levered her body upwards, nearly falling from the bed. The mother continued. You have to dress for a business, something nice, like a dress and heels. Pam looked around her bedroom. Something wasn't right. But what? Jeans and a t-shirt? Escaped the partially opened mouth. A dress and shoes. Your uncle runs a business, not a playground. Pam looked at her dresser and her desk and realized that she was in her own bedroom. She'd been sleeping in the guest bedroom for the past six months, ever since the mid-July snowstorm which had caused the Bellums to come stay. Pam sat there looking around her room with fear and dread. Paula had insisted Pam was not leaving the house in jeans and a t-shirt. She escaped after putting on a dress and high heels. It felt so weird. The car was sitting in the driveway. It was in need of a bit of work, but it was her car. Pam looked at the 1980 to Malibu and wondered where her pickup had gotten to. I left it at the office, but this car was scrapped at my Aunt Donna's house. Pam hoped and prayed her pickup would be there at the office. Climbing in, Pam fired up her chariot and headed to the bogus anomalous group office. Something has gone terribly wrong. Pam pulled up out front of the old mansion and looked. No pickup anywhere. The building had been an old mansion at one time, a long time ago, a long, long time ago, way back when some guy named McKinley had been president. This had been a fine example of overspending. Three stories with a huge something out back. There were some windows missing from the third floor, not just the glass, but a whole window, frame and all. A huge hole was all that was left of where windows should have been. The yard had been turned into a parking lot. Uh, too bad it was mostly dirt. You could see where the stripes would have been by the weeds growing between the cars. Several statues were occupying the front yard. Most were missing parts. Pigeon poo was the dominant coloring. A sign hung from the archway over the front porch. It said, The Bag Company. In tiny letters along the bottom was written, The Bogus Anomalous Group Incorporated. This was her uncle's business. What in the world is the anomalous? A Pam thought about looking it up later. The front door stood open just a bit, and it looked anything but inviting. This was the scene in a horror movie where the heroine makes a stupid move, like going inside. Pam ran inside. Well, kind of ran. Running in high heels was something to avoid if you didn't want to break an ankle. She pushed the door shut, but it only swung part way and then stopped, prevented from closing by the frame that was warped. 
The curtains hung on both sides of the door were lace and spiderweb, gray with dust from at least a century or so. The foyer had been converted into a reception area, kind of. There was a desk, old and solid, made from a few trees, and a few mismatching chairs, one of which was occupied by a man in short pants and a t-shirt. It was just a bit hot in here. He looked to be about half awake, but it was unsure as to which half. The desk was fairly neat. A phone, a pen set, some papers, and an in-out box. Behind the desk sat a huge bookshelf, full of old leather-bound tomes. A fan sat in the corner, stirring up the dust and making pages flutter as it rotated by the inbox. The man snored loudly and then awoke to his own trumpeting call. Huh? What? Uh, sorry, is the healer ready for me yet? He looked at Pam as if she possessed some kind of an answer for his question. Yes, sir. Uh, Cassandra will be with you in just a second or two. Cassandra Blavatsky came flowing from down the central hall, uh, just to the right of the desk. She was close to five feet tall and nearly as wide. Her dress was all blue. Uh, from her neck to her feet. Uh, that just didn't quite seem to touch the ground. On her head sat a blue scarf, making her resemble a small mountain of blue silk. A uh, Roger, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. I was clearing myself. A bit of a wing-ding last night. The woman looked at Pam. You must be the new receptionist. A uh, Ray will be along in a minute. Have a seat. Uh, Roger, come with me. Let's see if we can't clear your energy. The blue lady led Roger away, back down the hallway behind the reception desk. Pam watched Cassandra, wondering if she should ask for help from one of her best friends who didn't seem to know her yet. Shortly, a door opened to the left side of the room. Her uncle came walking in, a cup of coffee in his hand. Ah, um, Pam, uh, I thought you weren't going to make it. He didn't look at his watch, but the implication was there. Uh, sorry, I overslept a long night last night trying to get back to... Pam figured it was useless to tell her uncle what was going on, especially since Pam didn't have a clue as to what was going on. Her uncle forged ahead. Come with me... I'll get you situated. He led her as far as the desk and pointed to the office chair left over from last century. This will be your desk. It's a bit old, but it gets the job done. He preferred the seat to her. Pam sat behind the desk, the same desk she had spent hours in as she learned all there was to know about her uncle's business. Hildy was the current occupant, or would that happen in seven months from now? Her uncle gave her a tour of the desktop. You have a phone and a pen. If somebody calls, take a note and see to it, it gets to the proper party. Pam tried to look properly interested as he talked. The phone is probably older than you are, but it works, which is a good thing. Something about the energy around here makes electronics go kaputski. He pointed to the shelf by the front door, where a number of cell phones sat. It doesn't damage them, it just makes them do odd things. Odd things. Pam knew from experience that cell phones, computers, and other electronics would take on a life of their own, as if possessed or something. He continued, uh, Behind you is a small reference library. You'll get a lot of use out of it. Consider it your best way to find things. Yes, sir, I know I'll get a lot of use out of it. Uh, to your left, is a status board. Uh, it tells you who's in or out. Lets you know who is around. 
Around the office. Yeah, around. He was about to say more, but instead he looked at his cup. Right. Coffee time. Come. I'll show you our coffee shop. He pointed at the door he'd come through a bit ago. The door was solid wood and very wide. There was a window positioned above the door, allowing some cross ventilation. The window swung open from the top. Our staff spent so much time at the coffee shop drinking and, and talking and, and drinking, we decided to put in one of our own. Pam probably knew more about running the office than her uncle, since all the bizarre things she'd gone through. It was all she could do not to say anything. The coffee shop was located in what had been and still was the library. The real library, not to be mistaken for the books behind the receptionist's desk. The walls were covered from floor to ceiling, the twenty-foot-high ceiling, with shelves full of books from all over the planet. Some so big it would take more than one person to lift them down, others so old you might not want to lift them at all. Scattered about the shelves were ladders on wheels that could be moved about, allowing access to the books above. The floor space was occupied by several tables with chairs that didn't even try to match. The corners had big, soft-looking chairs for reading or sleeping, depending on the person in them. Along one side ran a coffee bar, with anything and everything coffee-related around it. A youngish woman sat in one corner, a mirror held up in front of her face. She might have been ex asleep except the coffee cup in her hand would rise up and disappear to her lips, presumably then descend to balance on one knee. Pam said, Good morning, Dolores. Before remembering, she wasn't supposed to know anyone yet. Her uncle just stared at her. I, uh, I saw her at a, a thing at the mall, library. Circus, Pam felt her face growing a bit red. Uh, just about every empty space had a coffee cup or two left sitting, waiting for rescue and wash. Uh, Pamela, this is Zeddy Chavez. Everybody calls him Techno. If you have any problems with electronic devices, he's the man to see. Eddie smiled at the newest member of the staff. Uh, just don't bring it in here. I'll get it from you by the front door and fix it outside. We have weird electronic issues here. He already knew Pam was the boss's niece. Everybody knew. It was near impossible to keep secrets. Eddie is the barista here. He runs the coffee shop and he does odd jobs as needed. Pam looked at her uncle. He looked back at her. Um, I really look forward to working here. As soon as her uncle had given her the house tour, Pam was tempted to slip out the door and drive to the mall to see about getting back to her right time, or rather, the time she'd been in before wandering into the past. Then she thought of all the things she was going to have to take care of from now until 6 p.m., when she'd be able to escape from here. Cassandra was going to need help with Stanley the werewolf. Those idiots from school were going to come by with that book they'd released the demon from. Pam wondered if the voices in her head were going to come back. I have got to get out of here. To make matters worse, she was wondering what had become of the Pam whose time she was now occupying. Was there a displaced Pam wandering about in some other dimension, wondering what had happened? The now her would be hard-pressed to deal with it. The seven-month-ago her would be devastated. The phone on the desk began to ring. Pam lifted the handset. Uh, this is the bag company. How may we help you? Her uncle looked at her and smiled. I need your help. 
We unleashed a demon from the dark side. It's about to destroy the earth. Okay, Bob, listen up. Here's what you need to do. Bring the book over to our office right this instant. Bring all the money you have on earth as well. You released a demon on the world, so you're going to have to pay for it. Tell those miscreants you call friends to leave town right now and not come back for at least a week. Pam saw her uncle running out the door as he made for any place not involving his niece or demons. By 6 p.m., Pam had done all the things she had done the first day at work. She felt as if she'd done a good job, even if she did jump the gun and give Stanley the dog biscuits long before Cassandra asked her to, and she had told Mr. Armstrong what he needed before he even told her what the case was. When nobody was looking, Pam drug a chair over to the closet, got up and looked on the top shelf. There, way in the back of the closet, sat Wendy. A little dusty, but still in one piece. Pam grabbed the doll and went to stuff her into the pocket, only to find she didn't have any. She was exhausted, but had no time to relax. She ran, carefully, in her high heels, out to her car and headed for the mall. Wendy sat on the passenger seat, the plastic smile frozen on her face. The drive-over seemed to take too long, but Pam knew this was just because she was in a hurry and nobody else was. The mall slowly grew in the distance. Pam managed to find a parking spot within the same time zone. Walking across the parking lot, Pam found her legs were sore from all the exercise she'd had today. Wait a minute. I've been running like mad for the past seven months. I should be used to this by now. Pam was shocked to think she was in her old body. I'm going to have to fix this somehow. Pam made a mental note to see about coming back to this time to do whatever it was she could do to fix whatever it was she had just messed up. With Wendy in hand, Pam entered the mall and began looking for the dimensions, styles from beyond. The mall map didn't show any such store. This is just getting worse by the minute. Pam looked around, trying to make a guess as to her next course of action. Someone grabbed her arm. Pam was about to go into her I know kung fu fighting stance when she saw it was Sarah. As Pam was looking at the girl, who she wasn't supposed to meet for another four days, she spotted Black Jacket Pam standing beside her. Um, er, how did you guys... Sarah interrupted. You have to come back with us. You went into the wrong fitting room and you wound up right in the right world but the wrong time. I kind of figured that out already. Black Jacket Pam was looking at Pam's outfit. How did you get changed so quick? You've only been gone for two minutes. Time travel gives you a lot of advantages. Pam looked around her world. I really wish I could stay, but seven months from now would be a lot better. I don't want to have to go through all of that again. Black Jacket Pam looked down at her feet. I'm kind of glad I'm not back home. Things are getting out of hand. Pam wondered how bad could things be. What's going on that you and the bag company can't handle? I think... I think Mom and Dad are going to get a divorce. Pam nearly bumped into a display. They what? See... Dad was trying to get the house fixed up, so he went to the bank for a loan, but they said no because they owe so much money already, and then Mom said he shouldn't have bought that boat, and he said she shouldn't have bought all that jewelry, and they started yelling and things, and Mom stormed out the door and went to live with Aunt Donna, and so Dad threw all of her things out the door, and Mom came home late one night and set the boat on fire, and... and Tears began to drip. 
didn't they go to that Dave thing? The guy who says, stop spending money you don't have and, and all that stuff? Pam began to cry uh, just a bit, thinking about how bad it would be if this were happening to her, which apparently it kind of was. No, they thought about it, but they never went. Sarah was trying to drag the two Pams through the door to the auspicious place menswear store. <laughs> Pam, Pam walked by. P uh, people walking by were staring at what they thought were twins having a meltdown in public. <clears throat> Sarah, is there any way at all you could possibly get me to your world only last year, say, around Christmas time? Sarah got a scared look on her face. Why? What are you going to do? Try to fix things in your world. Sarah led Pam and Black Jacket Pam into the auspicious place, men's store. The three stood around trying to look like they were waiting for their dad, who was trying on things in the fitting room. People keep staring at us, Black Jacket Pam whispered. Act bored, as if you don't want to be here. They'll think we're just kids. Pam pulled her cell phone out and acted like she was texting someone. The doors to the fitting room were a foot off the floor, so they could see if anybody was inside. Sarah was turning back and forth with a weird look on her face. We need number ten. It, it feels like the right one. Are you sure about this? I never ever would try anything like this if I were you. Black Jacket Pam looked at Pam. Well, okay, I am... You still, this is, now's our chance. Pam grabbed Black Jacket Pam and Sarah by the arms and ran towards the fitting room, number 10. A clerk saw them. Hey, you kids, those are for men only. Pam pushed Black Jacket Pam and Sarah into the tiny room and slammed the door. The clerk began knocking on the door. Pam had to push the other two to the side so she could get down on the floor. She ran her hands back and forth along the black design on the threadbare carpet. The knocking grew louder. Pam tried to stand on her hands and feet running both hands along the pattern. She kept bumping into her companions. The door began to shake as the clerk was trying to open it. The lights went out. Chapter 6 Welcome to the Past Pam awoke with Black Jacket Pam sitting on top of her. Sarah was on top of Black Jacket Pam. Get off! I can't breathe! She tried pushing the other two. Black Jacket Pam managed to wiggle to one side, and Sarah just got on top of the stool and sat there. I feel sick. Her head was pounding. Pam had the feeling of spinning around and had to close her eyes so she wouldn't get too dizzy. Let's go before anybody comes, Pam looked out under the door. The men's wear store was decked out for Christmas. There were trees with lights and garlands stretched everywhere. A clerk wearing a Santa hat was hanging suits on hangers. He saw Pam just as she saw him. Hey. Now, this isn't the girls' department. We don't even have a girls' department. Uh, sorry, that would explain why nothing fit. Pam opened the door wide. Come on, sis and little sis. Uh, let's go find Dad something for Christmas. Pam walked out as if nothing odd were going on. Sarah simply followed Pam and acted naturally. Black Jacket Pam had to be pulled along between the two girls. Come on, sis, time to go. They headed for the exit. The clerk watched, wondering how these three girls had gotten into the first, into the fitting room in the first place. The three stood outside the mall. It was a bit chilly, and Pam found having on a dress and heels was way underdressed. Do you have your wheels here, or do we have to walk? Black Jacket Pam pulled her keys out of her pocket. 
My truck should be here. Somewhere. She scanned the parking lot for the bright orange pickup. Sarah poked her in the arm. You don't have a truck yet. Remember, your folks bought it for you for Christmas this year. Pam felt just a bit sad knowing that Black Jacket Pam got a brand new pickup for Christmas while she was given a very used Malibu. Then she realized that, that kind of thing was why her folks, Black Jacket Pam's folks, not hers, were on the verge of a divorce. Come on, we walk. Pam and Sarah had to all but drag Black Jacket Pam along the street. She was dreading going home. If your folks never went to the Dave thing, how come you wound up working for our, or rather, your uncle? Uncle Ray came by one day and asked if I could just answer the phone for a while until he could find a new receptionist. I didn't want to, but I couldn't come up with an excuse, so I went. Uh, just for a week or two, uh, which turned into seven months. The three girls walked along in silence, each one worried about what was yet to come. The corner mark came into view, telling Pam they were just three blocks from home. Okay, here is the plan. I'll go inside and act like I'm you. When your mom and dad start talking about going to the Dave thing, I'll jump in and encourage them to go. With a little charm and a whole lot of luck, this should work. Wait, shouldn't you dress more like me? I never wear dresses. Mom will know something is up. Sarah pointed them to the corner, Mark. Slip inside and change clothes. They must have a bathroom. Pam and Black Jacket Pam went into the convenience store. The clerk eyeballed them as they walked to the back by the coolers. Sarah got busy with a distraction. Can you change a $100 bill? I need change for the phone. She waved a $100 bill under his nose. Too much big. I don't place that much money in register. Well, how about if I buy something? You must be purchasing many things. Sarah began strolling the aisles, looking for anything she didn't need or want. Pam and Black Jacket Pam looked at the bathroom. Don't they ever clean this place? The place looked like it needed to be burned and then rebuilt. The trash can was the only place there wasn't any trash. We don't have much time. We'd better hurry. The two got busy exchanging clothes. Pam felt really icky putting on somebody else's clothes until she forced herself to think Black Jacket Pam was her own was her only in a different timeline. They both used paper towels to stand on while they changed footwear. Pam looked at Black Jacket Pam, who was now wearing her dress and heels. Black Jacket Pam looked like she would pass out from embarrassment. This thing is so girly looking. Well, what do you think you are? Yes, but it's just, it's not me. Black Jacket Pam was holding the hem down in fear it might float up and show off her under thingies. The two left the bathroom. Sarah was standing outside with a plastic bag filled with candy, a set of jumper cables, and some air freshener. I couldn't decide what I needed, she told the two. Now who's who? Black Jacket Pam looked around, hoping none of her friends saw her. She hugged herself, trying to get warm. Pam was glad she had on a jacket at last, and then she felt bad for Black Jacket Pam, who looked like she was freezing. Let's get this done so we can get back home. Pam opened the door and stepped into what she hoped would be her home. It looked very much the same, except for the giant flat-screen TV and the new furniture. Her dad, Al, was sitting in his new recliner, paper in hand. Mom, Paula, was going through the mail. Pam, dear, how was the mall? Did you find anything nice for Uncle Ray's Christmas present? She never even looked up from the papers in her hands. 
Pam looked at her mother and father. They looked exactly the same as her parents, but they weren't. These were Black Jacket Pam's folks. She felt like a stranger in her own home. The Christmas tree was huge, not like the one her folks always put up. The tree was big, but the decorations were scarce. There were several hundred presents under the tree. Pam always put so many, <laughs> Paula always put so many ornaments on the tree that you couldn't see any green. And the floor was never a wash in presents. Nothing big, nothing expensive, but something for everyone. The huge tree looked sad, if nothing else. Pam remembered that fateful night. Any second now, her mom would look at the bill and say, We need to do something about our spending. And her dad would say, I heard about this guy who can help with our debt. And then <laughs> their world would change for the better. Paula opened the bill. She looked at it. Her eyes got huge. She looked over at Al. She carefully folded the letter and slipped it into her pocket. Well, dinner's almost ready. You should run upstairs and get ready. Apollo got up and headed for the kitchen. Wait a minute. This isn't how it went. Pam put a hand over her mouth. I said that out loud, didn't I? Al and Paula were both looking at her as if it were time it were it were time to <clears throat> try that again. Al and Paula were both looking at her as if it were time to look into therapy. Al looked at Paula as if to say, This sort of thing runs in your family. Uh, Paula looked at Al as if to say, Leave Ramona out of this. Pam had to think quick. It was a good thing she'd been doing a lot of thinking lately. She was actually coming up with a few ideas that didn't lead to disasters or running from monsters. We need to get out of debt, she announced. Al and Paula looked at their child as if she were a stranger. Okay, so she actually was, but they didn't know this. A Pam used the silence to her advantage. I was listening to the radio at work, no, no, at the mall, and this guy named Dave something was saying how we should stop spending money we don't have <laughs> and act our wage. Al actually set the paper down in his lap. He stared at Pam as if she were nuts. I don't need a new pickup, Pam hoped Black Jacket Pam wouldn't be too upset by this, and really, all these things, are are they really what we need or just what we want? Paula placed a hand on a diamond necklace as if it were more important than life itself. Maybe we could give it a try, you know. Get out of debt for a change. Pam looked from one of her folks to the other. They didn't look convinced, so she pressed on. Did you know that the leading cause of divorce is money problems? Now, who said anything about divorce? Al looked at Paula. Paula gave him the, don't ask me, she's your daughter, look. Just so you'll know, any time anything remotely crazy comes up around home, neither Al nor Paula want to admit that there were some characteristics in both families that needed medication, if not commitment. Pam was very much both their offspring. Pam leapt to her feet. I'm just saying that being in debt can ruin a marriage. We have more things than we can afford. It's well past time we did something about it. We should live like no one else. So later in life, we could live like no one else. Have any of you all heard that before? She ended in her Superman pose, hands on her hips, looking into the distant future. Al and Paula both stared at her. The room was so quiet, Pam could hear her stomach growl. She hadn't eaten anything all day. Paula looked a bit embarrassed. I just got the American Excess bill, and it's a doozy. Al looked at his wife. We do seem to spend a lot on things. Maybe she's right, 
We should do something about this before it destroys our family, Paula said. Paula pulled her cell phone out and began scrolling through the internet. Oh, look, there's one of those financial classes being held at our church, and it starts tomorrow. She looked at Al. Al looked at her. They both looked at Pam. Al said, you know, this sounds like a good idea. Let's give it a try. Pam whispered, rice and beans, here they come. When nobody was looking, Pam opened the front door and motioned to Black Jacket Pam and Sarah inside. The three carefully made their way upstairs while Al and Paula were registering for the class. Once in Black Jacket Pam's room, they all breathed a sigh of relief. Do you think it'll work? Black Jacket Pam asked. It worked for us. There are a few things you need to know you need to know about what's coming. Pam started telling about what plastic surgery was and how rice and beans could be made in so many different ways. When Pam mentioned the 1980 Malibu, which was going to take the place of the brand new pickup, Black Jacket Pam looked as if she wanted to cry. You want a pickup or you want your family? Pam got out of Black Jacket Pam's clothes and into her own. A Black Jacket Pam was kind enough to go to the closet and pull out a jacket and some boots for Pam. It was getting cold outside. They quietly stepped down the stairs at the bottom. Black Jacket Pam stuck her head around the corner to see if the coast was clear. Her folks were sitting at the dining room table. Paula looked up and saw her daughter. Pam, what took you so long? Dinner is getting cold. Have a seat and tell us some more about this Dave class you heard about. Black Jacket Pam sat down with a feeling of dread. She had no idea who or what the Dave class was, other than it worked for that other Pam's family. Well, you see, first off, you stop charging things. Pam and Black Jacket Pam, Sarah, uh, sat on the stairs and inhaled the smell of food. Pam heard a grumbling sound coming from her stomach. It was answered by Sarah's stomach. As soon, it sounded as if the two digestive systems were talking back and forth. Black Jacket Pam thought she could hear a mumbled conversation coming from the two on the stairs, but she couldn't make out words. <laughs> they must be hungry. She made sure her mouth was full. She never talked with her mouth full. Sarah started to laugh because of how it sounded. A dinner roll landed on the floor at the foot of the stairs. Pam grabbed it and handed it to Sarah. Sarah split it in half and gave Pam a piece. Soon there was a second, then third dinner roll. This would have to do. Pam, I never knew you liked dinner rolls so much. I'll have to make them more often, Paula said. Pam mouthed, Afraid not. Rice and beans for the next six months. At long last, dinner was consumed. The dishes were washed, dried, and in the cupboards. Al and pa Paula were both distracted by other things. Black Jacket Pam slipped around the corner. Not a word, follow me, she whispered. She led the others out the front door. Careful so as did not make any sound, they exited their sort of home and ran to the corner mart. Now what do we do? Black Jacket asked. We have to get back to the mall and see about getting back to the times when all of us are there. Er, that sounds weird. And with that, I am going to take a break. It's, it's, just, I can't stop laughing when I read some of this. Even though I know I wrote it, it's still hilarious. Uh, if any of y'all are at all familiar with Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, until next time, this is Chris James for Storytime. I hope you're enjoying the story so far. <laughs>